Indian city of Bhopal, the scene of the world's worst industrial disaster. 2,500 people were killed, a quarter of a million injured. Deadly gas leaked from a chemical plant belonging to the giant American company Union Carbide. Today, exactly six months after the tragedy, this picturesque city still suffers. Here in the shanties near the chemical plant, families still mourn their dead. Here, thousands of survivors are crippled by the after effects. But behind this human tragedy lies another story of bad engineering, reckless cost cutting, failures in management control, and wanton disregard for people's lives. Tonight, with the aid of confidential Union Carbide documents and former employees speaking out for the first time, World in Action examines the causes of the tragedy. We plot the many warnings of impending disaster at Bhopal. We identify critical differences between the company's American and Indian chemical plants. We show that the American company was aware that its methods of making and storing deadly MIC gas were dangerous. We established that Union Carbide bequeathed to Bhopal a dangerous plant, ignored warnings, and in a fierce bout of cost cutting, drove the plant through the safety barrier. It was early in the morning of the 3rd of December last when gas used to make pesticides drifted out of this factory into the communities close by. The cloud of methyl isocyanate gas had spread 25 square miles across Bhopal within half an hour. Men, women and children began to flock towards the town's main hospital. By morning, we had thousands and thousands of patients running about in the hospital. The number of dead bodies being brought by that time. And the actual rush started increasing from 4 a.m. onwards. And uh, patients who came mostly were having difficulty in breathing, respiration, cough, choking sensation. They could not breathe. And some of them were brought almost dead. Some came and died within minutes. Some died within seconds. And I think on the very first day, we must have treated about 20,000 patients in this hospital. Communities were destroyed by the lethal gas. Whole families met horrible deaths and hundreds of children were orphaned. For days afterwards, funeral pyres burned. The life of 13-year-old Sunil Vishwakarma was devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Months after the disaster, destitute people were still living in this field near the plant. Here, Mrs. Neelam and her four children struggle just to stay alive. Tonight, Warren Anderson is out on $2,000 bail. Union Carbide's first response to the catastrophe was to send their chairman, Warren Anderson, to India. On arrival, he was briefly arrested. What I'd like to do, and I hope you can help me, is tell my wife I'm alive and well and hi, Mom. You know, like he defended the company's safety record and insisted the Bhopal plant was just as good as its sister plant in America. Somebody has to say that our safety standards in the U.S. are identical in India or in Brazil or someplace else. 
and uh, that what they do here, we've been doing for years. Same equipment, same design, same everything. But Union Carbide's position didn't stay the same. Soon, Warren Anderson was saying that Bhopal was a remote part of their worldwide operation run by Indians. The American company's position now is that it did nothing that caused or contributed to the accident. I told you also that you can't run a nine, ten billion dollar corporation out of Danbury, Connecticut. It just cannot be done. Uh, this plant is, is in the middle of India, 8,000 plus miles away. We can't be there day in and day out and week in and week out. So you have to depend upon the people that you have in place and you have to give them all the tools that they need and you have to give them the support that's required. And we thought we were doing that. But World in Action has established how deeply Union Carbide were involved in what happened at Bhopal. Union Carbide America owned 51% of the Indian company. They designed the plant, set standards, trained workers, and monitored the operation. The closeness of the relationship between the American parent company and its Indian subsidiary can be traced in the history of the plant. This has been the face of Indian agriculture for centuries, but in recent years, machinery and chemicals have been displacing human labor. The new ways made India a lucrative market for pesticide manufacturers, among them Union Carbide. For years, the American company had been using MIC and other lethal chemicals to make its pesticide seven. Encouraged by the Indian government, the company decided to set up a modern plant in India. Union Carbide's decision to come to Bhopal was determined by geography. The city is at the center of India, at the heart of a major agricultural area, and linked by the main railway line from Delhi to Bombay. Bhopal is the capital of Madhya Pradesh, a state with the same population as England and three times the size. It's a sprawling, bustling city of a million people. Bhopal grew up around its expansive lakes. Its mosque is the largest in Asia. It was to these narrow, crowded streets that Union Carbide brought the high technology of the West. Bhopal's planning regulations should have forced the MIC plant well away from the city, but the authorities were anxious to attract a major multinational employer and bending the rules allowed the company to make its first major mistake. The plant was built in a populated area of the city. The choice of site was all the more dangerous because Union Carbide knew that there would be leaks of poisonous gas. Their own operations manual states, A certain amount of toxic gas release is unavoidable and unpredictable. But local people and officials were unaware of this possibility. So when the MIC plant, with its well-paid jobs, opened in February 1980, there was considerable celebration. We were so thrilled, we were happy. It was a boom for the town. It was a period of high growth for uh, uh, people working with Union Carbide. It was a career opportunity and everybody wanted to get in right on, you know, get in on the boom right in the beginning. Uh, we are a poor country, you know, and uh, we need investment, we need technology. So when somebody sets up a plant, everybody is grateful. You provided jobs. The euphoria was soon to fade away. Almost from the day it opened until the tragedy nearly five years later, the Bhopal plant was plagued with accidents. We've identified a series of incidents and warning signs which all pointed towards disaster. If these warnings had been acted on, the final tragedy could have been avoided. The first major incident in Union Carbide's countdown to catastrophe came on Christmas Eve, 1981. This man, Ashraf Khan, was dealing with a faulty valve, a frequent problem in the MIC plant. Deadly gas leaked and got into his lungs. His widow, Sajida Banu Khan, recalls the tragedy. और मॉर्निंग में जब उनके आने का टाइम था तो एक आदमी ने आके मुझसे बोला कि उनको थोड़ी सी गैस लग गई है वो वहीं हॉस्पिटल में है आठ घंटे के बाद वहाँ से वो छुट्टी दे देंगे तो आ जाएंगे हाँ मेरे शोहर मुझसे बताया करते थे कि वहाँ पर बहुत ही जहरीली गैसें बनती हैं 
ऐसी बनती हैं कि वहाँ पर मतलब कोई सांस नहीं मतलब खड़े हैं तो बैठने की मोहलत नहीं मिलेगी और ख़त्म हो जाएगा ऐसी ऐसी कैसे बनती हैं बस ये कहते थे कि जब मैं जाया करूँ तो दुआ किया करूँ मेरे लिए How important was the death of Ashraf Khan at the end of 1981? Uh, to my mind, uh, that was one of the turning points in the history of Union Carbide in Bhopal. Public opinion at that point of time started changing. You see, uh, people started lay laymen. They started realizing that what we are doing in carbide is not only providing jobs and employment, but it's also dangerous. Just six weeks after the death of Ashraf Khan came the next major warning. 